Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Peace Kama or Kama's Diary as you all know. So on this on this video today, I'm gonna be telling you all the cultural shocks and things you need to be aware of before you come to Canada. The cultural shocks, the differences, you know, important things you need to know so you won't be surprised and shocked when you get here. Okay? So um just before we get into the dates of this video, I want to tell you all to please like, subscribe, share this video. Like, I see you all support and I appreciate it a lot. so this um presently like right now as i'm sitting here now i'm in a very very beautiful garden a very beautiful garden i don't know if you all can see it but the garden is so beautiful so i always see this garden whenever i'm on my way to school like it's a very beautiful garden and i keep wondering is it free for the public can anyone go in there and relax and have a good time and I told myself, girl, you need to find out. So guess what? Like I'm off school today and I decided to like, you know, walk around, get to know the environment. Like you all know, I'm like getting to know my environment, my new environment, getting to know my way around and all of that. So I decided to pop by and see if, you know, if this garden is, um, you know, free to the public, like, like free, 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 you know, I don't have to pay an entry fee or an entrance fee yeah so because back home when you see a beautiful garden like this like a park sometimes you need to pay so i just needed to be sure that it's free because this girl doesn't like to spend money just anyhow anyway so i made my findings and i realized it's free so i decided to bring my friend here for us to have um you know to take him the good and beautiful atmosphere you know to enjoy the beautiful air sightsee you know take beautiful pictures for the gram and so yeah here i am now and i tell to make this video here because i mean this environment is just so cool it's cozy and whatever you can think of so yeah um on today's video let's get into the details of this video so so some of the things you need to know before you come to canada so that you will not say ha huh, i was not informed i was not told now you are being told now you're informed now first things first the first thing you need to know is about the weather mm, the weather okaranko <laughs> you are evil <laughs> you should understand what okaranko means anyways the weather is very 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 different from what you know way back from home if you're from nigeria and you're from lagos in particular anyways i lived in lagos majorly all my life so lagos hits lagos hits <laughs> lagos hits is something else lagos heat is something else because you know the houses in lagos are jam-packed coupled with the sun the sun will finish your life if you are fair before in lagos you become brown let me not say black let me, let me know if i exaggerate and if you're brown before you become black trust me anyway so coming here here coming in here i came i because i'm here in summer and summer we know summer is meant to be um the cold the the warm time when the weather is warm you know they can do outdoor activities and all of that but trust me like i mentioned in my other video this weather in summer is really cold like okay for, for, for you all to understand how cold it is during this summer period it's just like when you have the hamatan period coupled with the rain raining season everything joined together the dryness the cold 
two of them mixed together that is the summer here at least for this province where i live okay in halifax here you combine hamatan and raining season together because it's it, it rains here as well and sometimes it's it, it showers all through the day and everywhere is just cold and even when it doesn't rain sometimes the weather gets you know very very chilled and you can't go out wearing sleeveless but they i mean the canadians they wear sleeveless but for we the newcomers we wear cardigan all the time like i always go out with my cardigan see i have my cardigan in my bag here you see so we always go wearing our cardigans or our sweatshirts because the weather tends to get cold like too cold for us my hand right now is freezing cold sometimes you notice your nose is dry and you might even be bleeding like i experienced some bleeding the first two weeks of my arrival here like my nose was i was bleeding like and my nose was bleeding and it was very dry my lips are always very dry and cracked that is the same symptoms you have when you're in nigeria during the hamatan period so it's the same thing you're having here it's just like the hamatan period it's cold it's it's dry just a mixture of the 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 raining season the hamatan period everything mixed together so it's, it's not hot hot no it's not hot for me it's not hot anyways that's one thing you need to know so another thing you need to know about coming to canada before you come to canada hmm? Mm, the most important thing you need to know is that there are no easy jobs to jobs are not easy to come by i don't know what you've heard i don't know anyone must have told you oh come to canada before you know it oh you get a job you start getting many millions and all of that akoko story i'm not trying to discourage anyone but i'm here to tell you all the facts and the fact is that there is every likelihood you might not get a job in your first month staying in canada there is every likelihood of that first month second month so that is why when you're coming you need to come along with enough provisions enough money to see you through your first second and third month here before you can get a job okay so because it's not like you what you have back home you can always walk into any place and oh submit your application and all of that granted you can do that here in some in some organizations but um, in a more corporate organization sort of even really not corporate like you can't really just walk in and submit your applications you need to apply online so many of the job postings here are usually online and you know when it's online there are so many people applying you're not the only one and there are chances that you might not get called mm -hmm. there are chances that you might not get called and even if you get called it's going to take a while like a while so just have that at the back of your mind it is not easy getting jobs here if you're a new person so international students just have this at the back of your mind getting a job is not that easy it's not that easy it is not that easy i'm still job hunting presently it is not that easy to get a job so another thing you need to know is that um there are so many cultural differences here in regards to their food so you all have noticed the food here like most of their foods they are canned and they are sugary like sugary 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 yeah most of their foods are sugary so like me coming from nigeria i'm not used to canned foods and coming here and getting foods that are canned the taste is it's quite somehow for me imagine cooking stew with your canned tomatoes and you are getting that sugar taste you know what i mean that sugar taste <laughs> so just prepare for that that is two um things you need to note the weather condition so for the weather here in this summer time the there is longer days like the days are more longer and short, there, there are longer days and shorter nights so what do i mean by longer days so it gets bright really early it gets bright as early as six yeah six a.m everywhere is bright and it gets dark from nine p.m so but during the early early um early days of summer it's it begins to get dark from 10 p.m but now it begins to get dark from 9 p.m so if you're out say 7 8 8 30 p.m towards you know few minutes to 9 p.m it's going to still be bright like the weather 
the weather is still bright like you can you you can see around you can move around without having to hold any torch or anything 8 p.m everywhere is still very very bright like literally literally very bright so but when it gets to 9 p.m 9 30 p.m the weather begins to become get dark gradually so 10 p.m everywhere is dark so you should expect dark dark um you know um, the weather being dark dark as night you should expect nightfall that's the word you should expect nightfall from 10 p.m i don't know if i'm making any sense so you should expect um dark night time from 10 p.m so but i heard that during the winter time it's you know it gets dark pretty much earlier so but for summer time like this it gets dark really late so that's it um for the weather condition here so another thing you need to note is that canadians hmm. if you have a problem with smoking inhaling smoke and everything get ready my brother my sister get ready to inhale a lot i know this might sound silly i know but that's the truth so get ready that here um people smoke freely that's one of the culture shocks people smoke really really freely here and their law permits it weed is a common thing here there there's cannabis shop like boldly written you can walk in and get your cannabis but that is not healthy but it's just for you to know that smoking is a thing here like majorly majority of canadians uh, and their inhabitants here we all smoke and another thing you will see that is very very common here is the tattoo like with almost 80 percent of canadians here are tattooed up like you must see someone with tattoos old young name them like tattooing is it's, it's a normal and common thing here tattooing smoking they are very very common here very very common like it's like almost 80 percent of the people here smoke they have tattoos it's like a normal thing here so and just know that if you're not good with the smokes and all you need to go al along with your nose masks bring enough nose mask because every corner you pass you always perceive the smell of smoke the smell of weed if i let me use that word the smell of weed trust me this is no joke you can't really really breathe fine because the the smell of the weed from smokers passing by smokers standing by will definitely dis disturb you so to protect yourself you, need, you just need to go ahead and and have your nose mask so i have my nose mask here just get your nose mask to protect yourself and if you don't like the smoke if the smoke disturbs you just you know use your nose mask on so yeah that is it for so that is um, another of the culture shock so another thing is that canadians are really really nice hmm. they are so nice because back home <laughs> Because back home, people are not so nice. But Canadians are nice. They are nice, they are gentle, they are soft-spoken. They have this gentle baby voice. Be them man, be them woman, old, young. They have this gentle, soft-spokenness. Unlike our Nigerian. <laughs> So just get ready for that. They are so so if they speak to you calmly and they are polite, they are not forming. Okay? That they are being genuine. That is who and how they are. They are nice, they are polite, they are gentle, they are soft spoken. I'm practicing to be soft spoken now because you know mixing with them, I I want to learn, you know, to be soft spoken like they are soft spoken. They really are and that is something i find really appealing yeah so I, I, i'm actually learning from them on that aspect being more gentle being soft-spoken you know being very nice so yeah that's something um i'm taking from them so another thing you might want to know is that the drivers don't use their horns pee 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 there is nothing like that since i came here i've never heard one p from any moto <laughs> honestly they don't use those sounds because everyone just obeys the traffic law everyone moves on their lane no one moves on the wrong lane 
and there is no reason why you should be honking and honking and honking because that honk is noise honestly it is noise so here there's nothing like eh, pee pee uh -uh. nothing like that believe me no no joke there is no honking here all the vehicles move no um no driving on on the wrong lane like two vehicles can be coming and they're on separate lanes they don't need to honk to like excuse me move away nothing like that so everything here is well coordinated even if you're coming um going through a sharp corner or a sharp bend driving from a sharp bend there is no need to honk because everyone is driving on their own different lanes so it's 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 very regulated here everyone obeys the traffic laws everyone obeys the road signs and it's very very you know peaceful no noise it's just very very good so all this is a shock to me because coming back coming from nigeria everywhere you'll be hearing the 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 honks of cars is it honk or horn <laughs> please correct me let me not go and tap on i'm not going to blow bad grammar anyways coming from nigeria i know that everywhere vehicles are really pressing p p p p every here and there but there's nothing like that here like i've never i've not even heard one car honk since i came and that's the honest truth everything is well coordinated here so that's what you need to know and another thing on the aspect of respect mm. if you know you are so huge like you are really really big on somebody calling you auntie uncle brother sister mommy daddy i think it is better you stay back home in nigeria honestly i think it is better you just stay back home in nigeria do you know why i said that because yeah hello nobody gives one cent about uncle auntie brother sister mommy dad mm -mm. everyone calls you by your name so there is nothing like oh hi uncle frank hi uncle this hi auntie this there is nothing like that they are gonna call you by your name your name the name your mama and your papa give you so that's what i noticed here even kids call older ones by their names I know it's gonna be a bit strange to us coming all the way from Nigeria where respect is the order of the day, even if it is a hypocritical respect sometimes. But here everyone calls each other by name. By name. So don't be surprised when a child calls you being a 30-year-old by your name. It is the norm here. It is the norm here. Everyone calls each other by name. Sometimes when you even call them ma, they look at you somehow like, why are you calling me ma? Or why are you calling me aunt, uncle, uncle, uh, aunt, uncle? Like I'm not your uncle. I'm not your aunt. Just call me by my name. So that's another thing here. No one cares about your title or whatever from wherever you're coming from. Just the only one to refer you with your name or refer you by your name. That. So another thing you need to note is about the road. The roads are neat. Ah. Canada road is neat far. We need to go. Ah, the other, very very neat. You can't see a drop of paper on the floor. Mm? Drop paper on the floor. See, give me a panel. See what thing happen. Say you know see trash. Can you go drop your paper? You go drop your trash. Now you delete the ground. I'll be waiting. Everywhere is neat. So for those of us coming or uh, of um coming from Nigeria, where everywhere is majorly you know. Uh, not regulated cleanliness is not regulated so i hope you don't find it challenging to keep your road clean like when you come here like the roads are clean so you need to maintain that you don't drop anything on the floor you don't um litter the ground your waste whatever waste you have you put it in your bag when you see a trash can you drop it in the trash mm so canada canada road is really neat there there are no deaths on the road it's very serene peaceful neat so another thing i want to tell you is about the road signs so is it no not not the road sign road usage yes using the road so now you all permit me i'm i'm, I'm making comparisons now because i'm making comparisons so you all will know the difference okay from way back home and here now for the road priority are given to road users that is pedestrians priority are given to pedestrians using the road not like in our country 
priority is given to the to the drivers eh? they say the, the, the drivers uh, are kings of the road it is not like that here pedestrians are king of the road to be honest to be honest pedestrians you're walking on the road is literally like you own the road respect is given more to people who you will walk on the road so for example now you're you're walking on the road and a vehicle is coming you're, you're trying to cross the road the vehicle is coming the vehicle is gonna it's gonna hold on it's gonna pause and let you pass so honestly speaking the, ve the, ve the driver will stop like all the vehicles irrespective of how many speed they are running by they are coming with before once they see anyone crossing the road they all pause and wait for you to pass believe me even if you are crawling <laughs> crawling to cross even if you are crawling to cross the road they will wait until you crawl finish they are very patient not like Nigeria eh? they will just jam you pass and go who will send you eh they will ask you, eh? You 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 you, you, you not see a road today? Why 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 go they walk walk like snail? Here, yeah, there's nothing like that. They will respect you and wait for you to cross the road. So that's another thing I noticed. And another thing I noticed is that. Um, so another thing you might want to note is the bus sitting. So in the bus, in the bus, there is a reserved position for the elderly for people on wheelchairs actually there's a different bus for you know the what's the word for them they're physically challenged there's a different bus for them that is those that use the wheelchair and all of that there's a different bus for them but if they still enter the normal bus there is a separate space where they have to stay with their you know their wheelchair their crutches and stuff and there is also a separate space for the older ones and those with babies you know nursing mothers that have their strollers with them so in that particular seat or that section you don't just you don't sit there and if peradventure you see you're seated there and this um set of people comes onto the bus or comes in walks into the bus and they want to sit you have to stand up for them yes that is that is the the, the, the style of system here if you're sitting on any of those seats reserved for those set of people or those space or that space reserved for those set of people i'm going to put a video up here so you all can see the space i'm talking about so if you are sitting on that set that space you need to stand up when those people who owns there or who are meant to be there come in so for me i'd rather not even sit there at all because you know you wouldn't want to be standing up when they come in to sit so that's another thing priority are given to those ones as well so another thing i would also be mentioning is the yes is the trash system here so back home all the trash goes into the trash can right like one trash can your food waste your bottle waste your paper waste your whatever waste all the waste goes into one trash can so here it is different here there are different um there are different trash cans and colors for different kinds of wastes so for food waste that is organic waste there's a different trash can for them and for paper waste there's a different trash can for it and for bottle and um um can waste there's a different trash cans for them because obviously those bottles and and you know mineral or soft drink cans soda cans they are going to be recycled so there are like three different trash cans for three different um wastes that's the word for three different wastes so if you're new here you, you should want to note that you don't just dump all your refuse all your trash into one um into one trash because that's actually going to be a problem when the waste collectors come to collect the wastes so that's something to note so another thing i'm going to be telling you all before coming before coming thing you need to note before coming you want to bring your health insurance mm. it is very very important so health insurance is a very big thing here i know that back home the people don't really really do insurance of a thing i wasn't so particular about insurance insurance even while i was back home in nigeria so but coming here you need to you know you need to have insurance for different things you need to have your car insurance you need to have your health insurance you need to have various types of insurances here so but if you're coming from nigeria you need to buy a health insurance 
Now, I'm going to mention this, that I know some people prefer to buy their health insurance from Nigeria because it is cheaper. But trust me, sometimes it doesn't really cover the health situation you might have when you come here. No one is praying to be sick. I know. Nobody is praying to be sick. But emergencies happen. Things that were not planned for, they happen. No one wants, nobody wants that. But does your body understand it? I mean, even the Bible says time and unexpected events before or happen. So you just need to prepare. So for those that buy health insurance from Nigeria, I really don't know how much coverage that can cover them when they come here. But honestly, I would advise you buy your health insurance here. If you're coming in as a student, buy your health insurance from your school. You know, let 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 your school um, um, be the ones to sell health insurance to you because they know the inside and out of the country of Canada here where you're coming to. And, you know, I mean, you're, you're buying your health insurance in Naira and it's, it's going to be cheap. And here you're coming where they're spending dollars and things are a bit expensive. So my point is try and, you know, see if you can buy your health insurance from here because it will help you a lot. Because if you come here without a reasonable um, amount of health insurance, you would have to pay out of pocket. And paying out of pocket would be really, really expensive. Trust me, it would be so expensive for you to handle. So I just said to add that. So I understand that it might be a bit expensive, but if you look at the the end run, the, the, the long run of it, if you don't buy the health insurance, you end up paying more here by you know paying them with money when you come here. So I just said to chip that in. And another thing, come with your medications from Nigeria. Very important. Mm come with your medication if you know you have a health situation please come with your medication if you can come with your you know your over-the-counter medications like your panadol your paracetamol you know your aboniki balm you know those simple medications come with them because here yeah, your body is used to the nigerian medical um, medicine system or your, your body is used to the strong effects of you know nigerian medication